welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. United County Sheriff Rod Machel is our guest. We're talking about a variety of issues, uh, some state issues as well, and it's uh, apropos that you're president of the uh, New York State Sheriff's Association. Sent some kids to camp this year too, didn't you? Yes, that's an awesome thing. The Sheriff's uh, Institute has owned a, uh, a gorgeous camp on Cayuca Lake. Um, and and uh, each year, and they've owned it for decades, each year uh, the sheriff of every county gets to pick a dozen kids and uh, send them away for a week. It's an awesome camp. But basically, you know, we focus our, our uh, selections on kids who, whose families struggle a little bit financially where yeah. they wouldn't have the opportunity to go away for camp, you know, to camp. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's very structured. Uh, they get up early in the morning and they have breakfast. They also have to help clean up. Uh, they do a lot of educational things during the day, plus a lot of fun stuff, you know, nice. uh, kayaking and, and uh, sailing and fishing and swimming and campfires and, and all kinds of stuff. And again, they incorporate a lot of structure into it. So it's if, an awesome, awesome, awesome opportunity. If somebody from Oneida County uh, wants to be considered for that, how do they do it? Sure. Um, they can reach out either through our community affairs office or they can call my office directly. Um, we have a presence uh, between our school resource officer program and our special patrol officer program. The sheriff's office has a presence in every single school in Oneida County with the exception of two or three. And um, our, our officers and, and deputies assigned to those schools uh, will typically work with the with guidance counselor's office through the year mm. to come up with some good candidates. You know, kids who, they're good kids and they really need to, you know, they'd be, they'd be deserving of a good vacation away, but they just don't, their family doesn't have the financial backing. I'd love to send 100 kids this yeah. summer. I can only pick 12, so we try to, you know, scatter around the county, so we're covering all the districts in, a, in as fair a uh, manner as we possibly can. The, uh, you mentioned school uh, resource officers. Is that the correct title, school resource officers? We officer? have two programs. We have school resource officers. They're called SROs. Uh, they're in uh, a handful of schools. Uh, we have SROs at BOCES in Verona, BOCES in New Hartford, and Westmoreland. And then we have our special patrol officers. They're, they're the uniform officers of the sheriff's office who their, their primary function is security. Their job is to keep the, the children, the faculty, and the staff safe at school during the day. We are in every single school district in Oneida County with SPOs, special patrol officers, except for New Hartford, because they have New Hartford police handling their security, Oriskany, because they have the Oriskany police handling their security, and uh, Rome, Rome police handling theirs. We are in every other school district in the county, including Utica, but in Utica we only do half the district. We do the 10 elementary schools in Utica Police, they handle the middle and, and high school. What did uh, County Executive Vicente do recently that, to enhance that program? He, Something, uh, right? Yes, actually he did a significant thing. Uh, about a year and a half ago, um, he, with the support of the legislature, they put uh, $500,000 on the table, half a million dollars for that year one, any school that jumped on board with a with an SPO program, the county would pay half of the the cost. Um, you know, he and I together saw what was happening around the country. We just see one school shooting after another after another. Uh, you know, we're, we're we're we were begging both federal and state officials for funding to help us amp up the security in the school systems, and we just weren't getting any traction. So. Um, the, the most recent one since his offer, I mean, right after the Parkland shooting, that's when you know he reached out to me and said, this can't go on anymore. We, we got to do everything we can to prevent one of these things ha from happening here. So that's after the Parkland shooting, that was the kind of the, the straw that broke the camel's back as far as, you know, he stepped up to the plate and he said, you know what, we've got to put money out there. We put that incentive out there. I went on a mission. I did presentations at every school district in the county, every school board meeting, almo almost every school board meeting. Met with superintendents, met with principals. They all loved the program. They couldn't say no because we were putting half the money on the table. And uh, lo and behold, a year and a half later, we have every single school district in the county, except the three that I mentioned because mm -hmm. they already have existing agreements with, with a different police department. But we're in 11 and a half school districts in the county, which is awesome. The uh, uh, Talking about manpower, women power, you also were uh, promoting some uh, tests that were coming up for patrol officers yes. and corrections officers. Yes. Is the corrections officers done now? Uh, the tests have not occurred yet, but okay. the, the sign the, up period the sign up period for both is come and gone. Uh -huh. And uh, the tests are happening this month, this month in September. And um, you know, we're hoping that we have a decent turnout. I mean, we got a we have a real good turnout for the patrol test. Um, we're, we're okay with the turnout for corrections. We wish it was a little bit more because that's actually where we struggle with our vacancies. Is the, and, is the um, problem you have hiring uh, corrections officers the fact that we have so many state prisons here? No, um, not, well, it, it is part of it. 
the problem with that, that we face here in Oneida County, it's the same problem that we face across the state with other sheriff's offices, with the exception of a few. Um, our base pay is extremely low compared to what a state corrections officer makes. So they come to us, they, they learn the career, they like the career, and they go to work for the state, and their base pay is about $8,000 more before overtime than what my staff makes. So that's a struggle. They have a quicker retirement. They can retire five years sooner. Um, so there's a lot of pluses to working for the state as compared to working locally. So yeah, yes, in a way, indirectly, those, those other prisons are certainly taking away a pool of people from us. But also, it's a, it's a unique part of the law enforcement career. It's the foundation of law enforcement. Without corrections, mm -hmm. um, you'd have, you wouldn't have jails and prisons that are secure. Um, and it's, it's a difficult work atmosphere at times. Yes, it is very rewarding. You are, make a po you are making a positive difference in people's lives every single day, but you're also confined to working inside a jail. Where a police officer, you're outside most of the time. Um, you know, both jobs are just as dangerous. Um, they're just as important as one another. But like I said, the police officer, um, there's just being able to put your car window down is a great feeling. When you work inside a correctional facility, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky enough to have a window in your part of the jail that you can look out, that's great, but you can't open it on a day like today. You, you just can't because right. it, they don't, that, it's a jail. You, you're confined inside that facility. When we come back, we've got some more things to talk about with the Knight County Sheriff Rob Mayshill. He's been in that job for nine years. We'll talk about mug shots, too. Mug shots is something that uh, sure. has been in the news of late. Short break, right back.